I remember the first day that I fell in love with evangelism. I was a senior in high school and I was in the locker room preparing for gym class and I heard a few of my peers talking about church. They said a lot of general things and it seemed apparent that they really didn't know much about the Bible or God. So I said, you guys don't know anything about God. I wanted to get their attention. And so immediately the three guys surrounded me and one of them said, well, what do you know about God? To which I replied, I know a little bit. And so I began to share the gospel. And eventually, after a short while, two of the guys left, but the one that stayed behind was glued, absolutely glued to what I was saying. I mean, this kid was hanging on to every word I was saying. And then something amazing happened. As I continued to share the gospel, this kid opened his backpack, pulled out a couple of pornographic magazines, and threw them in the trash. Now, I could not believe what I just witnessed. I started laughing, and I said, why? Why do you have these at school? And he said, because I didn't want my mom to find them at home. <laughs> now, here is the best part. The kid started confessing some of his issues with me, and he wanted me to pray for him. He was depressed and thought about committing suicide. But he walked out of that locker room that day feeling excited about life again because of the gospel. And every day when I was at school, he would look for me, hoping that I would tell him more about God. He just couldn't get enough. He wanted to hear more about the gospel. Now, to make a long story short, eventually he disappeared in the middle of the school year. And I did not know where he went. He vanished. He was gone. But three years after high school, I ran into him at the public library. And I did not recognize him at first, but he gave me a big hug and said, You saved my life. I have now been on a few mission trips, and I am a youth leader at my church. Now, I didn't save him. The truth is, Jesus did. But I want you to know that this evangelism experience changed my life, and since that moment until now, I have been sharing my faith and seeing God do amazing things, incredible things. And yet, I am saddened by today's church culture. In today's church, if someone says the word evangelize, it is almost like saying a filthy cuss word. Really? The E word has come on hard times. And Jesus has commanded us to go. But we have said no. And the truth is this. Not all of us have the gift of evangelism, but we are all called to share our story. The story of how we were lost, but have been found. The story of how we were blind to the things of God, but now we see. We are called to it. Sometimes it just, it, it just seems like we share everything but Christ. When someone has a headache, we say aspirin. When someone has a bacterial infection, we say penicillin. If someone is going through despair, we say counseling. But what about the name of Jesus Christ? I am not saying that we need to be on the street corners yelling at the top of our lungs. But I am saying that we can mention the name of Jesus Christ in our everyday lives even in a locker room, like I did in high school. You know, I believe as Christians, we want our churches to grow, but it needs to be for the right reasons. Do we want people to attend so they can sit, or do we want people to attend 
so they can be sent. Sometimes I believe God allows our churches not to grow because we are not willing to go. Go into all the world and preach the gospel like Jesus said. But, but when you are a church that loves to share Jesus, when you share the gospel outside of the church, then God begins to send more people to your congregation because he knows it is a church that desires to make much of Christ through the spreading of his glorious gospel. Isn't it amazing how the church in Acts was persecuted and yet it was a growing church? Why is that? Because they love to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And friends, we must do the same in a country, a world that is becoming darker.